Liz Calloway Show, the first one. The Liz Calloway Show, Our Voice Ignited. Thank you so much for joining us. We're at Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. I know. We had an absolute beautiful day today. And who could believe that it's actually February 5th? Right? It's a Chamber of Commerce day, right, Karen? <laughs> and that's Karen Reardon. Uh, we're going to be talking to her in just a little bit. We have some great guests here. But uh, before I get started, I just wanted to touch base with everybody about why we're doing the show. The first thing that everyone was asking when I put this on social media that we're going to be doing this YouTube show, Liz Calloway show, and everybody's like, what is it? Are you leaving radio? Is it on TV? Is it another radio show? And um, it's none of the above. What we're doing is not about politics. It's not about anything um, that'll divide us. It's about pulling us all together. We have a lot of great things going on on the Grand Strand, and I really wanted to highlight that. I wanted to bring to you people that are doing amazing things around the Grand Strand, because these are the stories that we don't hear enough of. I mean, wouldn't you agree that we had enough of this negative news, the negative social media, fake news all day long. I talk about politics and news 20 hours a week. I'm thinking about it another 20, 30, 40 hours a week on top of that. So what we wanted to bring you was some positive information and show you the fabulous side of the Grand Strand. Because isn't this a great place to live? I, we really need to tell more people about our story. And uh, we have seen what had happened when we've gone through some some bad weather and hurricanes and floods and we have some people here that were flooded out of their homes and they've persevered and we've all helped each other and that's really what the Grand Strand is about. It's about the strong fabric here in Myrtle Beach. So I just wanted to make sure you all knew what the show was about. Now if you have any uh, suggestions about guests or anything like that, you can always feel free to contact us. We're on the YouTube channel at The Liz Calloway Show. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and of course Twitter. But of course, more than that, we'd love to see you here at Thoroughbreds uh, right in Myrtle Beach. It's in the heart of Myrtle Beach, really. And the reason why we're here is because they have this fabulous room, fabulous happy hour, and they're so gracious to um, accept us. So what we're going to be doing on this show every other Tuesday, uh, doors open at 4.30, show starts at 5.30, is highlighting voices in the community, featuring the people that are really making a difference. And I wanted to bring this show on TV. I pitched it to TV. I pitched it to radio. Uh, been turned down at every corner. They said it wasn't controversial enough. It's too sleepy. It's a snooze, they told me. They told me, ah, it sounds like a weekend podcast. Uh, you know, why don't you put it there and see what happens? But I really do feel that the people that I'm going to bring to you, and you'll see today, that we just don't hear enough about them. We don't hear enough from them. And they have amazing stories that will truly inspire you. It will inform you about something that we need to know about and it will ignite your spirit and that's what we're looking to do here we're looking for a positive um, outlook on our everyday community here on the Grand Strand so I wanted to thank you all for bringing you along but before I get started if anybody is uh, an avid listener to the radio show I have to tell you something that I have told people time and time again that I always dreamed of being uh, like on QVC. I, I, I am obsessed with As Seen on TV products. I don't know if any of you, anybody buy As Seen on TV products? Come on. Do you got, all right, do you go down that aisle in CVS and you like stare at it and you go, oh, so that's the touchless toothbrush, toothpaste. I, I mean, I have like almost every gadget because I, I just love them. And so the other day I was in CVS and I saw something I think that we're really going to need because in South Carolina, I don't know if you heard, maybe our lawyer, Angie Knight, heard about this already, but pretty soon it looks like they're going to pass this do not hold your cell phone in your car law. Right now you can't text and drive. It's a $25 ticket. Soon they may pass the law that you can't even touch your cell phone in the car for any reason, like never. And if you do touch it, it's going to be a $200 fine. So they see you just like pick up the phone and put it here. It's like you can get pulled over for that. 
So in anticipation of that coming up, I found this. It's an As Seen on TV product. It's the coolest thing. I got it at CVS. It's called the Fast Ball. Now, you all need this. And I, and I, I just wanted to tell you, I'm going to do like a little QVC commercial, because you never know when I might have to audition. This could be my audition tape. Never know, they might have an opening. Um, this is an amazing product. Now, does someone have a cell phone that they want to uh, try this on? You want? Come on up, Angie. Come have a seat with me. <laughs> now, Angie, I know you wouldn't do anything illegal. So, if, if it were, <laughs> if it were illegal, I'm just going to turn this on. If it were illegal for you to hold your cell phone, this would actually solve the problem. Okay. All right. How does it work? All right. Which way is up on your phone? This is up. Okay. So what you do is you take this. Do you mind if I stick it? Because you could take it off eventually. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so you take this part, and it's going to be like, um, you know those, uh, those, does anybody have those little holders for your phone? Kind of put your finger there and hold it. So it's going to double as that. Okay. All right. So go ahead, hold it. Okay. And then this part goes onto your dashboard, and then watch. Okay? And now you can do whatever you want with, is that the coolest invention? So I'm not holding it, but no. I'm still able to use it. Exactly! Liz, you're going to get everybody in trouble. I know! <laughs> now nobody will ever get a ticket, I'm telling you, because I get pulled over all the time in Myrtle Beach, all the time. The city of Myrtle Beach pulls me over every time. But you can now put this, look how strong this is. Now, I have problems with my phone slipping out of my purse, falling onto the floorboard. Then I try to get it out, you know, and I'm That's exactly at right. the stoplight, reaching down into the floorboard. Well, so. there you go. So you yeah. know exactly what I'm talking about. So now you never have to worry about that. You just have to stick that onto your dash. You, you won't get a ticket. You're not going to lose your phone. And how much are you willing to pay for this? $19.99? No. no. How much? $15.99? No. You... <laughs> That's right. You shop down the same aisle I do. You can get this product for $9.99. Is that amazing? Only one low payment. It's a <laughs> <laughs> one low payment. I love it. Thank Thanks. you, Angie. Thanks, Liz. You can enjoy it. Here's the instructions in case you forgot okay. how to use it. There you go. <laughs> we'll talk to Angie in a little bit, a little bit more in just a little bit. We're going to have a, a great segment about real estate. But anyway, I just wanted to, um, uh, Bud, we can edit that up for QVC later? Okay, good. That's good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be right back in just a few minutes. We're going to bring on our first guest, Karen Reardon from the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. Our second guest is Angie Knight. You just saw a little preview from Grand Strand Law Group. She's going to give us uh, five things that we need to know before shopping for a home. And then we'll have Beth Coleman joining us from South Strand Helping Hand. So we'll be right back on the Liz Calloway Show. Thanks for joining us. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill. Wine Spectators Award of Excellence. Voted Best of the Beach, 15 years. Classic Tableside Service. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill on Restaurant Row in Myrtle Beach. Visit thoroughbredsrestaurant.com. <laughs> this is, this is live. <laughs> Welcome back to the Liz Calloway Show, Our Voice Ignited. And joining me right now is Karen Reardon from the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. She is president and CEO, and we are so happy to have her here, and she is ready to inspire us, right, Thank Karen? you, Liz. <laughs> Glad to be here. Thank you for coming. Now, Karen, I, I know we met uh, just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, we met actually Labor Day weekend, yeah. and you had just started the job, mm -hmm. and I said, hey, can you come on the show? And she was running <laughs> up to the microphone to join us, and we are just so happy to have you. Thank you. Now, you have seen Myrtle Beach probably at a you know, really scary time because mm -hmm. the, the hurricane was coming. We didn't know which way it was going. What did you learn about the city of Myrtle Beach? I really learned that when the chips are down, uh, like most great communities, people pull together. And I was really, really impressed 
with just the way the community was very resourceful, very scrappy. Just it's, it's a very entrepreneurial community to begin with, but I think that sometimes you see the best in a community when it's at, you know when something terrible is happening, yeah. um, particularly like that when it's a natural disaster and. You know, we can control a lot of things in the world, but we can, cannot control Mother Nature. That's She's going right. to do what she wants to do. So, um, again, I was just so impressed. None of us wanted to go through that experience. But if you're going to go through it, it's nice to know that people have each other's backs. Yes. And there's just a very deep level of caring in the community that I felt from day one, which has been great. And, and I can second that. I mean, uh, going mm -hmm. through that, not knowing which way it was going to go, and it was just a really scary time. And, and the aftermath, of course, as well, because that impacted the city of Myrtle Beach, even though the, the weather and the flooding mm -hmm. didn't get a direct hit. It was a lot of trouble people getting here. Yes. And, uh, and a lot of businesses. So, so before we get into that, though, I wanted to talk more about you. Sure. And I had seen this video of you from 2012, mm -hmm. and it was a, a time where you were honored for, uh, for, from the, a, a conference, I think it was called Women in Business, Correct. right? Now, one of the things I learned about uh, you was that you were a journalist to begin with, a graduate. You were in Boston, and you applied for a job in a marketing firm. Yes. So tell us a little bit about how that went, your first so, uh, interview. Again, I, I fell in love with marketing, even though I studied journalism, and I decided to go for this job. And it was interesting in that um, I really had to learn how to be a negotiator right away. Most people don't get thrust into that situation immediately, but um, this position was initially you know, put out uh, in print, um, and I applied for it. And then once I interviewed, I was told that they were going to hire from within, which is a good thing. And I was happy for the person who was currently there, but disappointed. And then they came back and told me that I could actually apply for a different position, which was a secretarial receptionist type of position. Mm -hmm. And again, I just graduated. I'm the first person in my family to uh, have the, the ability and the honor to be a college graduate. And so I just spent a lot of money you know, working hard over four years to put myself through college. And I thought, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Um, and so I went to my go-to mentor, my dad, uh, mm -hmm. and said, you know, should I take this? What should I do? I really want this job. It's a foot in the door, but it's not what I planned. And he said, you're going to negotiate a better position. Uh, and so what I ended up doing, and it, it took a lot of courage, and I think the human resources person thought I was insane, <laughs> um, but um, I went back in. thinking like, who does this girl who think is she is? Who is this 21-year-old, yeah, and exactly. why, is she, why is she being so assertive? <laughs> But I simply said, you know, I was excited to have the opportunity to join the company, but it, that was not really what I wanted to do. But I was willing to work hard and earn my way up. But I wanted it written into my offer letter that I wanted the first opportunity that came along to interview for other positions within the company, which was growing. And that if at the end of six months that opportunity didn't arise, then I was going to leave the company because I did not want to be, you know, put into a secretarial so, position. So basically, uh, you know, you wanted to say yes because mm -hmm. you knew it was a foot in the door, right. and you knew you would work hard and and mm -hmm. be able to to excel. And and that's really that mm -hmm. part about believing in yourself. Mm -hmm. But along the way, there have been so many mentors that yes. you have encountered. And tell us a little bit more about that. And and you had mentioned that your dad was your mm -hmm, mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, what other mentors have really been able to help you move up? I've just been so blessed in my career to have so many amazing people. And it's something that inspires me uh, now at this stage of my career to be thinking about a lot how I can be that hand to help others. Uh, but just so many people. And again, the advertising and marketing industry is pretty male dominated. So I didn't really have a lot of female role models um, you know, to model my career after. But just again, the, the kindness of people who would say, there was a particular creative director at that first firm that said, I want you to continue to develop. I think you're a very strong writer. And so he gave up a lot of his lunch hours to actually sit hmm. with me. Um, and he didn't need to do that, but he wanted to do that to help me. And in that, that company, as I said, I kind of set a six-month deadline. I was able, actually, in 14 weeks to apply for a different position oh, in that company and move off that secretarial pool and, and mm -hmm. actually start to move into a marketing career. And that particular person, that VP, was just an incredible mentor who you know, was never upset anytime I asked, why do we do this and what about mm -hmm. that? And 
again, all through the stages of my career. I literally am, I think, a living, breathing example of what I, I love about the American dream, which is meritocracy, really. Mm -hmm. It's about putting in the hard work, yeah. uh, not being afraid to ask questions, um, trying new things, going out of your comfort zone, admitting, well, I don't really know a lot about that. I knew when I was first working on banking accounts, I was like, well, I don't know a lot about financial services, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to learn it. Later on, it was, we won the Volkswagen account. Well, I don't know a lot about automotive, but darn it, I'll learn it. You know, yeah. so each time I had these incredible mentors that just kept pushing. And even when I didn't think I was ready for a new opportunity, they would say, you can do so this. If that's what a good coach is about. Mm -hmm. So what do you think uh, if there are people that want to be, have that uh, ability to mentor others? Because a mm -hmm. lot of us, we have experiences and mm -hmm. we may not see that value in ourselves, but what, is, what do you think it takes to be a good coach, a good mentor? I think, again, it's first about being open. It's being willing, willing to share your experiences. Um, also, there's, you know, it's, it's sometimes a, a, a dirty word, but if there's a vulnerability that comes with being a great coach and mentor. You have to, when you're coaching, admit that you yourself have made mistakes mm -hmm. and that you've learned from them, and then that's the experience and wisdom you're right. sharing. Uh, and you know, some people like that, and some people don't want well, to admit know, that. The one thing that I, I definitely see, and, and ladies, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like sometimes you, you encounter other people that don't want to help you because they actually mm -hmm. are afraid that you might kind of surpass them or yes. take over their job. But there's a way to overcome that because that's not, there's room for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. You just, Again, uh, life is so precious. Uh, you know, we spend so much time in the work world. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things uh, one of my mentors told me a long time ago is you're probably going to spend on any given month more time with people that you're working with than sometimes your own family, your spouse or your children or your best friends, your mom and dad. And so you darn well better, first and for foremost, love the work you're doing, mm -hmm. because if you don't love your work, then it's right. going to be drudgery. And you need to really love and respect the people that you're working with. Yeah. And again, part of that love and respect is seeing when someone is struggling and helping them and being a mm -hmm. mentor. And so I've tried to do that with internships, with other people that have come into the business. Um, I get more out of being a mentor now than I po possibly <laughs> give. That, it right? is. It yeah. feels good. And then when you see someone, I, I just recently saw someone on Facebook that had come in right out of college, and mm -hmm. they've just been promoted at this firm in New York City That's to VP. Awesome. And I feel like their mom. I'm so yeah. proud of them. You know, it's like, oh wow, I knew this person yeah, when. You know, it's a, it's a great feeling. Now tell me about this little figure here. So this is Underdog. So this may be aging myself a little bit. This is a cartoon <laughs> character from. The 50s and 60s, um, and again, one of my best friends in the marketing business and one of my mentors, um, who is from Augusta, Georgia, he gave this to me a long, long time ago. And it was his observation uh, that um, many people in the company that we were working together at um, constantly underestimated me mm -hmm. and what I was capable of doing. And so there was an opportunity where I had a chance to be promoted into a bigger role. And um, again, I could tell that some people didn't think that I was ready for that. Uh, but he came and he presented this with, you know, to me and said, first and foremost, I believe in you. I know you can do this job. And I want you to have this. And I know this is a silly gift, but I want you to put this on your bookshelf wherever you work, wherever you are in the world. And when you're having one of those days when you don't think that you've got what it takes to do a great job, just look at this and know that I believe in you, your parents believe in you, mm -hmm. and you've got this. And right. so this has become sort of a symbol for me. <laughs> I take it with me everywhere. It's one of the first things I so impact that, in that's Myrtle been Beach. To Williamsburg oh, and this all is over this Boston. has been to DC, Boston, <laughs> New England, New York, yeah. um, Williamsburg, and now here in Myrtle Beach. And I put it right on my bookshelf and I look at it every day. And that's uh, something else that I, I just found so fascinating mm -hmm. is that when as you were climbing up this corporate ladder you were it seems like you always were very open to changing the location meeting new mm -hmm. people changing cities moving your family and and it seems like that family unit is something that you need also that support absolutely and i think again um you know timing is everything in life mm -hmm. um, but it's also again that word openness uh going back to accepting things uh, i heard someone say recently that you know, there's a plan for all of us, and sometimes we don't know what all the puzzle pieces are and how they work together. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to trust. Uh, if you, you believe in a higher power, which I do, uh, 
uh, when you believe uh, that you know there is a plan and you just can't see it, you just sometimes have to push yourself out there on that ledge mm -hmm. and you know move from New England to Washington D.C. with sort of that first. Who oh, am I? You yeah, know, am I right. ready is this for this? the right thing to do? Right, yeah. and then moving to Williamsburg was a place we had visited and we'd always loved. And then last year when I was approached about this for Myrtle Beach, you know, I'm sure a lot of friends and even some of my family members are like, what is she doing? That's crazy. <laughs> um, but they knew that I love the beach. They knew that we had visited here before as a family and that we loved it. And, um, you know, that, that I was open to doing that. But you're right, it's about having a strong support system. Yeah having belief in yourself, but also having those, you know, key, key people in your life that are going to have your back no matter what happens. Now, uh, the one thing I wanted to also say is that the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce is just not a chamber of commerce. It's, right. it's a different animal, really, because mm -hmm. you're dealing with the businesses that are here, but you're also attracting business and commerce and tourism to the community as well. So your job is very multifaceted. It is. It's very complicated, and that's what I love about it. It's never the same day twice. And uh, as you said, there's not that many models that are like ours left in the country, but it, it's a very, very efficient model because we are spending a lot of our time supporting local business mm -hmm. up and down the Grand Strand. 78% uh, of them are small businesses. So it's not like they're the these big behemoths, Beach, right? Yeah. It's the backbone of our community, and they need a lot of support. They need promotion. They need... Um, at free educational seminars. They, they need a lot of things to make sure that their business is going to prosper. And we care about each one individually, but we also care about the collective because we want the economy to be humming and we well, want that to go well. Today we were talking about how the Hilton Grand Ocean 16 Hotel is coming. Mm -hmm. um, it's going Same. to be built on 16th Avenue North in Myrtle Beach. It's going to be 26 stories. Is that going to be the tallest? I believe that will be the tallest yes. in Myrtle Beach. So what does that say to you when you have big companies like the Hilton coming here mm -hmm. and you see um, hotels like Breakers mm -hmm. redesigning and, and rebuilding? Top Golf coming. Top you know? Golf, yeah. We just had them on the mm -hmm. air uh, the other day as well. Mm -hmm. So what do you... What is that indicative of? I think it's the word you just mentioned a moment ago. It's about evolving. Nothing ever stays the same, and you have to, again, accept and embrace change. And it's very exciting that companies mm -hmm. want to continue to invest in the Grand Strand. We have a lot of companies that are third, fourth, fifth generation. That's, again, part of what makes Myrtle Beach Myrtle yes, Beach, I right. think. So there's great loyalty and depth. But it's also a very welcoming place. I mean, again, we're not a sleepy beach town. Not at all. I, I think it was. I mean, I'm. I'm. A, I've only been here five and a half, six years. Mm -hmm. But I. I mean, it's a vibrant community. It's very, very dynamic. Diverse. Yeah. Very diverse. Very dynamic. It's always changing. Mm -hmm. And again, one of the favorite things that I've sort of learned over the years is that if you're not changing and growing, you could be atrophying and you could be dying. And so right. no one wants that. So again, it's all about balance in terms of how you do that. Um, but again, um, having companies come in is just, it's healthy. Yeah. Uh, it's a sign of good health and dynamism. And again, because the other half of our life is tourism and getting people to come here and visit and experience, guess what? They become new movers like me. Yes. If I had never visited Myrtle Beach <laughs> as a visitor, right. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here today with you because I wouldn't have moved here. Now, you know? that, that's the other part I wanted to ask you about because there's always a lot of pushback when people mm -hmm. hear how much money is being spent and on out-of-market mm -hmm. advertising. Uh, what is it? Why do we want to focus on out-of-market mm -hmm. advertising, and, and wh what do you say to the critics to that? Well, again, in destination marketing, that that's a sign of health. That's how you need to continue to bring an influx of new visitors to the Grand Strand. Uh, Daytona Beach does that, Virginia mm -hmm. Beach does that, Miami Beach, um, Destin, uh, you name it. Um, all of our competitive set, whether they're a beach destination or not, you have to constantly be um, filling what we call affectionately the top of the marketing funnel, mm -hmm. which means that once you get someone, say, from Ohio to come and visit, um, chances are very good that they're going to enjoy that experience and they're going to come back again. Mm -hmm. So we do spend some money making sure that they will revisit us year over year. So that's nice, steady business for our restaurants, like yes. Thoroughbreds. Yes. It's important exactly. for you know the outlets. It's important for our hotels. So every part of the economy. Um, but we also know that then people, especially now, um, get very restless and they like to try different places, right? So they might decide but they don't want to come. But we have a lot of come. personality in the, in the yeah. just be, because your chamber of commerce is the Myrtle Beach area. Exactly. So it, it goes so it's from, the whole Grand Strand. Yeah, the whole so Grand Strand, yeah. 
you know, maybe they have never been here in October mm -hmm. and they want to golf and, you know, they do different things with their family during July. Maybe they want to go to Polly's Island and the next time they come, they want to see what the experience is like doing a beach rental in North Myrtle. So we have a lot of variety to offer. Um, we're not just beach, we're not just golf, so we have to tell that story. And we have to constantly be refreshing by bringing new people to the beach because some people who maybe came 10 years ago, now they've decided they want to go to California this year. And so in order to keep those numbers up, we have to constantly be reaching out. And that's why a lot of the work we've been doing recently has been also with the airport. Um, why is that important? Well, people that start to go west of the Mississippi, they're not necessarily going to drive to Myrtle right, Beach. It's right. just too far a drive. But now that we've got a new nonstop from Kansas City, They'll fly in here yes. and spend a week and go back. And so it's important to keep breaking down those barriers. So as I said, it's really, really fun dealing with our, all of our small businesses mm -hmm. for the chamber, but then constantly trying to stay, you know, one step ahead of our competitive set as it relates to tourism, which is a very fast-paced thing. I just wanted, before we uh, say goodbye, mm -hmm. I wanted to say that you were nice enough to bring this book with you because this was a book that I noticed mm -hmm. on your desk when I went over to the chamber. And, and this just simply says, yes, and uh, nevertheless, she persisted. Well, what does that mean? Um, it's become, again, a bit of a mantra. One of my best friends from Williamsburg, Virginia, gave this to me at the time I was leaving to come here to Myrtle Beach. And, um, you know, she paid me the highest compliment because she said that, you know, again, the job is very fast paced. There's a lot of different facets to it. Um, but you never give up. And that's, again, that's core to my DNA, to my personality, is that, you know, when things get a little tough, you can, you can run and flee from it, or you can kind of hunker down mm -hmm. and really persist right. and be patient and just keep working at yeah. it. And so I just really, I was really touched by that. And I thought, yes, that's what I need to do every day <laughs> as I need to remind myself to keep persisting and be positive yes. and keep moving forward. Well, um, we, we're so glad that you Thank know, you. You're part of the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce and President and CEO, and we're, to we're very lucky to have you. Thank you. So thank you so much, Karen Thank Bearden, you. Appreciate for joining it. us. Thank, thank you. you. Due to their relationship with numerous insurance companies, Carrie Johnson Insurance is able to offer personal and commercial lines of insurance, including home, auto, wind and hail and flood, as well as general liability and business owner's insurance. Carrie Johnson Insurance is located at 9290 Highway 17 Bypass in Merles Inlet. Give them a call, 843-357-9404, or visit them online, carriejohnsoninsurance.com. They would be honored to help you with all your insurance needs. is Angie Knight from the Grand Strand Law Group. And I've known Angie, oh, I, I mean, it's got to be five years now. I think so, five yeah. years, yes, ma'am. And uh, Angie is a local attorney. She's owner and uh, basically the managing attorney of Grand Strand Law Group. She is Grand Strand Law Group. So thank you for joining us today, Angie. Thank you, Liz. So I know that um, you actually focus on many different areas of law. So tell us a little bit about Grand Strand Law Group. So I started Grand Strand Law Group in 2009. Um, and it was one of those things where it was the downturn of the market, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have a choice. I had to go out on my own. Um, so I uh, talked to my mom and my dad, and <laughs> they, of course, supported me and uh, started my own firm. And How does one go about starting their own firm? Well, you borrow $6,000 from your parents. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and you rent an office and a computer, and, and that's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, <laughs> I, I have a joke. I tell people, you know, I was determined that I was going to do this the right way, that I would not have any debt, and so I did not even buy a paper shredder until I made a few bucks. <laughs> like, that was, I was determined I was going to do it the right way. Yeah. And, um, and it was, you know, 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a real estate that attorney. Was, wow. In 2008, 2009, this is a not a good thing. And so, um, but, but I stuck to it, and with the support of my family and friends, um, I just uh, started doing everything because mm -hmm. I couldn't do just real estate at that right. point, obviously. Um, and so I now have a general practice firm. Um, we do real estate, estate planning, probate, business law, litigation, criminal litigation, everything you can think of. Um, but I enjoy, my mm -hmm. favorite thing is still real estate, and I love doing real estate on the Grand Strand, so that's what I want to talk to you guys about today, if that's okay. Yes, absolutely. And before we get into that, I just wanted to ask you, what is it like, um, you know, because this is also a male-dominated field, so what was it like for you forming this, this 
firm. I mean, there were times. There have been times in my career when I felt um, that the gentleman on the other end of the phone was <laughs> probably not giving me the respect that I deserved, mm -hmm. um, and and uh, probably cutting me off a little bit more often than should be. <laughs> but I'm pretty forceful. So, really? <laughs> so you know, it never really bothered me that much. Yeah. I, I just right. keep going. I keep plugging away, and um, and talk a little bit louder if I need to in order to make my point. <laughs> right? I do that every every morning. I, right. get, I get what you're saying. So, okay. So, tell us about this. The five most important things you said you wanted to bring to us because of the fact that some of us don't really have all our ducks in a row before we start shopping for a home. Right, and so... We're trading up, trading down, yeah. you know. Yeah, there's, there's always a lot to consider when you're, when you're looking to buy a home. And, and I tell folks, the first thing you need to think about is, are you getting a loan, right? Are you getting a loan? What's the interest rate going to be? Have you been pre-approved by your lender? What lender are you going to go with? And, uh, and, and how, much, how much are you approved for? Um, because if you don't know how much of a loan you can get, you don't know how much of a house to shop for, right? Um, you got to know if you're selling your own home, what, it, what is your net going to be? Are you gonna do, what kind of down payment are you going to have? Um, are you able to get a loan where you can put down 20%? Because that really can make a difference in what your payment on a monthly basis is going to be. So it's important to find a good lender um, to find uh, the, the right loan for you. There's a ton of loans out there. You How can buy a house with almost nothing, with almost nothing down. Right. I mean, there, there, was, there was a loan that they actually give you 2% and mm -hmm. you make up the 1% to get your 3% down. I mean, it's incredible what's out there. Now, how, how can they find that lender? Like, what do you recommend when people come to you and ask for advice? I usually, you know, tell folks that they should probably take a look at their current bank, whoever they bank with, mm -hmm. speak with the lender at their bank, um, the loan specialist there, but then they should also shop around a little bit for those interest rates. Um, call up a few banks, call up a few mortgage brokers. Um, mortgage brokers can shop a loan for you. Mm -hmm. And so that's always a good option to talk to them about what's the best interest rate they can find. Now I know something that always kind of sticks in your craw is our HOAs. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. now, I mean, one of the things when I was looking for a home here on the Grand Strand, and I was unfamiliar with HOAs, I tried to find a house that didn't have one. I couldn't find one. The, every one I, you know. Few and far between. Yeah. So, but I found one that had the least amount of restrictions, but it's really important to ask for the C CRR, what is the, it called? The bylaws the and bylaws. the CCRs. CCRs. The covenants, okay. covenants, conditions, and restrictions. Okay, that's what it was. <laughs> and so if you, find a, if you find a home that you like, you know, if you have a dog, if you want a fence, mm -hmm. if you, you know, don't like being told how to cut your lawn. Or, yeah, the you know? business vehicle, like that's <laughs> right. always an issue too. Yeah, yeah, Motorcycle, exactly. mm -hmm. RV, boat. All those things, yeah. any of those things. I mean, you would think, oh, it shouldn't matter whether I have a boat or a motorcycle or an RV, mm -hmm. but it does because there are lots of HOAs out there that have restrictions. Some of them don't want to allow you to park them in your, at your home at all. Some of, some of them say they have to be behind the front of the home, right. behind the back of the home, which I recently learned. Um, I live in Surfside. Oh, God. And <laughs> I uh, love Surfside, but they have so many rules. We do have a yeah. lot of rules. We have a lot of rules. You I know. almost moved to Surfside. I it's love awesome. it. Yeah. I love the area, but we do have a lot of rules. I recently learned that the back of my house is, starts literally behind the back of my house, like the side yard, that's a thing. There's a side yard. Not the same as the back of your home, by the way, ah. folks. Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, you want to make sure that you understand the bylaws, the covenants, conditions, or restrictions of your HOA or of your city mm -hmm. ordinances, right? Yes. Um, so that you can make sure that you're not going to be restricted in, in your plans. If you want a fence, if you want a dog, Maybe you want a pot belly pig. I'd love to have one. A goat. I want a goat. <laughs> yes. I really want a goat. The miniature goats, they're very cute. <laughs> I um, can't have one in my HOA. I, I can't yeah. have one in my yeah, city. I know. Uh, oh, yeah. no goats allowed in Surfside? No goats very or bad. pot belly What's pigs. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's, those are, that's something that you really need. And your realtor can get those covenants, conditions, and restrictions and bylaws for you. Um, and if she doesn't have them, she can contact the attorney that you're going to be using and get those from them as well. All right, so when it comes down to finding an attorney or not even using an attorney, or some people say, I could do this all by myself. Well, I know that you're an attorney, so you're a little biased, maybe, just a little. But tell us why it's important to have an attorney. So if you're buying a home on land in South Carolina, you have to have an attorney as a buyer or a seller. That's the law. you got to have one. 
some things, you know, we have a lot of mobile homes on lease yes, land right. here in the area. And they're a great opportunity, a great um, substitute for some folks that, you know, they're looking for something. If they're just coming down, you know, once in a while, mm -hmm. it's a great right. place for folks. And so we also do have a lot of folks around here that buy those mobile homes on leased land. And th they're realtors, and everyone will tell them you don't have to have an attorney to buy a mobile home on leased land. And that is true. But there are a lot of reasons why you should still consider having an attorney. Okay. And those are the same reasons why you should have one when you buy purchased land. Um, we do title searches. So we look at that land. We make sure that there's no restrictions. Um, there are no uh, issues about access to the property. I had a situation where we had a client once. Um, they wanted to buy a piece of property. We looked at the plat and we realized there was no access to the property at all. What? Yeah. They couldn't get to the land that they wanted to buy. It, you know, you just wonder, how does that happen? Though? It does. Like, it like does. all these years, they had no official access no, to the land. No access to the land. And so, you know, that may have <laughs> influenced their decision, but they decided not to buy. Right. Um, so that's, that's the sort of thing that your attorney is going to do for you. We're also going to make sure that the money is, is uh, done correctly, that things are prorated. Everybody pays their fair share and, and pursuant to the contract. The contracts, yeah, the contracts, and the other, the other thing. Now, I do remember uh, how to get an inspector. Is mm -hmm. that required? It's not. It's really what you put in the contract. Okay. So, uh, we always, and your realtor will always suggest that you have a home inspection because otherwise, how are you going to know, you know, Something's what the wrong, house looks yeah. like, and uh, you know, in the attic, you know, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, you can get a home inspection. You can get a termite inspection. You can choose to purchase a home warranty, or maybe the seller will pay for that for you. And so all of these aspects are things that you can you can decide when you're looking at the contract and you can negotiate who pays for those things as well. Right. All right. Any other tips that you can give us on your list? Well, when you're moving to Myrtle Beach, I would probably suggest <laughs> that you consider, um, you think about when you're going to get those keys. In Horry County, mm -hmm. we are special. <laughs> we are special, <laughs> folks. We often tell, and, and, and our rule of thumb in this area is that you don't get the keys until it's recorded. It doesn't record oh. until after everyone's signed. And so that's mm -hmm. our typical rule of thumb. Um, we're a little different than the rest of the state and quite frankly, the rest of the country. So <laughs> that's just the All way right, we do things right. around here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, because I know you do other things like estate planning and uh, probate, mm -hmm. what are all the other things? Estate planning, probate, business law. So if you want to start yes. a company, that sort okay. of thing. Yeah. All right. How can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can check out my website at grandstrandlawgroup.com or give us a call at 843-492-5422. All right. Angie Knight, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank Liz. You. This is Liz Calloway here for Conway Ford. Here are your Hot Talk headlines. 2019 is going to be a huge year for Conway Ford. As you can see, we're expanding to serve you better. And yes, we're open during construction. The factory has allocated us extra inventory during our remodel. We need to sell these vehicles because space is limited. Andy Loan can save you thousands plus all factory rebates. Now that's something hot to talk about. Ignited. We are here talking to our hometown heroine today. Her name is Beth Coleman and she lives in Surfside. She is the president of South Strand Helping Hand. Welcome to the show. We are so happy to have you. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, you know, we were talking a little bit before about Hurricane Florence. Were you busy during Hurricane Florence? Maybe just a little? Very busy. Yeah. Very busy. Every tell, day. Tell us what South Strand Helping Hand is and, and how you got kicked into high gear. South Strand Helping Hand actually was created in 1986 by then mayor of Surfside Beach, Mr. Dick Johnson. It was started out of a little storefront on um, 3rd Avenue South with the help of a few area churches. And they felt the need to have supplies on hand for people when they're down and out to give them a lift up. Um, it grew over the years to over 20 area churches, over 60 volunteers, and we purchased our own building. Now we're on Popular Drive in Surfside Beach. We work with um, Low Country Food Bank, uh, United Way, and, but our majority of our donations are from the community. Uh, why, are you, why did you get involved with South Strand Helping Hand? How long have you been involved with it? Um, when I moved here in 2008, I immediately, that week, went down and volunteered at South Strand Helping Hand. It just 
to me, and I had a career in law enforcement in New York City, and I always felt like my job, as wonderful as my career was, and uh, I always felt like I was just putting a Band-Aid on things in life. And I just wanted to give back more than what I felt I was doing at the time. So this gave me the opportunity to do so. So I started as a volunteer, and over the years of being there and seeing how it's run and how wonderful it is, I decided when they asked if I would be the president, I, I said absolutely. So give us an example of, of how you help people. So is someone referred to South Strand Helping Hand, or how does it work? It works in a multitude of ways. Mm -hmm. the most part is through word of mouth, but we help the amount of help is, is all over the board, but we start, we really are a food bank, basically. We're like a, a supermarket in there. But we do events that reach out now, in the last few years, to show compassion and kindness, and, and in a non-judgmental zone, is what I like to call it. And I try to bring in everybody, because I already work now with the courts and people do community service hours. Now I have the schools and the children come and do community service for their degrees. I try to incorporate the senior citizens of the town. Mm -hmm. The police department and the fire department are huge supporters. Our town council supports us. So I try to do events, and my biggest one, I think the best one was our blessing bag event. And what we did was I just, when you get those string backpacks that they give away at events, yeah. I collected them. And then when I had a lot of them, I'm talking 300 of them, um, we just put out a blast and asked for donations of protein bars and different things. And what I did was put these, these blessing bags together. And we did that, again, with the community as a whole, as an event. And then I encourage people to take those bags and leave them in their car. So when you're driving down the road and you see somebody that's asking for oh, money, yeah, that's a great um, idea. instead of giving them money, you give them a blessing bag. And then we had notes of encouragement inside those bags, as well as toiletries and other things. You can basically put anything you want in a blessing bag. Um, and I have to tell you, every single time I've given them out, and I've given them out since I was in New York, yeah. I, I've been making those. Every single time I've handed a blessing bag to the, to the people, they cry. Really? Every single one of them. So the people did the event with me, and they mm -hmm. took them home in their cars. And then we had over 200 that we were able to bring up to Deacon Peter at Community Kitchen, where he was able to give them out in Myrtle Beach to the homeless people there. So I think that we have created at South Strand Helping Hand we don't want to be in competition with any other nonprofit. Mm -hmm. That is not the idea of being good and being kind. What we've done is branched out, and we've brought them in with us. So when we have an overflow of things, I might get a store that gives me 100 pairs of shoes. I, can't, I don't have 100 children that I could give it out to, and I don't have the space to store it. So I'll reach out to Fostering Hope mm -hmm. and bring it to them. Yeah. Or there's a multitude of places that you can reach out. But most of the people do it by word of mouth, although there is you know, some internet and Facebook book activity. But they come in and we give them food for their family. But we also do help with electricity and water bills mm -hmm. and it depends but on the situation. there's a lot of situations because I know with, um, with the work that other organizations do, a lot of people can't get to the community food bank. Mm -hmm. So how do you go to the streets? Like you were saying, you know, you have these blessing bags and you can bring them to the people. But I mean, how do you, how is it that you reach everybody that is in need? Well, we work by service areas because there's five helping hands. Um, and I am probably the bad girl that crosses over the line. Oh. <laughs> but if hungry to me is hungry and yeah. a need is a need. So I'm going to take, for example, uh, when Hurricane Florence hit. I did Hurricane Matthew, and I went out a little bit in the streets. But with Hurricane Florence, I was there before the waters came up with the people. And I talked to them. and. Their biggest concern when the floods come in is that they want to be home in their house. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to think about yeah. getting food or driving to Surfside and, mm -hmm. and filling out paperwork. And to me, all I had to see was how they were living and what they were suffering through. So um, I changed it up big time, and I think I exhausted a lot of people, but it's okay. <laughs> Every day I would have people at my office, and we rented containers, and I would put the word out and the donations just came in, and they were mm -hmm. overwhelming donations. And then I would fill my husband's pickup truck and a huge enclosed trailer that was South Strand Helping Hands, and each morning we would go out um, and just drive t towards the water. And mm -hmm. we would just drop down the back, and it was set up, so, it was organized so well by my um, volunteers 
-hmm. that it was like a store and they could go in there and get what they needed. Are you, are, is that something you need, volunteers? What kind of supplies do you need? Like what can we do to help? Well, we're always in need of peanut butter and jelly, believe it or not, <laughs> because that's a big staple. Yeah. Pastas, uh, any kind of macaroni and cheese, uh, canned meats, mm -hmm. tuna fish, things like that. We always have the need for that. Um, we do work with the area supermarkets, by Lowe's and Food Lions and Lowe's Food, where we get their, their meats. And then we have walls of freezers where we freeze it. And we, we're able to give out meat also to the families. Mm -hmm. But things like cereal, I mean, toilet paper. Right. Things that we don't think about. But um, if you rolled out into the streets in Rosewood, mm -hmm. for instance, and you handed a child one little box of macaroni and cheese, and they were so excited for that. Right. They truly were grateful for wow. that. Wow. So I try to tell people that, you know, you think, oh, I only have a can of soup. I can't really help them. Well, yeah, you can, because that can of soup fed a child. Mm -hmm. And again, never judge, because all of us, I believe, I know I do, we carry things in our hearts that are hurtful, and you don't want to be judged for it. Mm -hmm. So instead of bringing people down, we need to lift them up mm. and help them be stronger and better people. Right. All right, so now if, if somebody wanted to contact you, I know you're on Facebook, South Strand Helping Hand mm -hmm. is on Facebook. Uh, is there a phone number or a, in the office, you have office yes. hours? Yes, we uh, we're located at um, 815 South Popular Drive in Surfside Beach, and the phone number is 843-238-4594. We are open Monday to Friday, 9 to 2, but I'm on call 24 hours a day, okay. so we work with domestic violence cases and, and situations mm -hmm. like that. And since we do have the resources and I live right there, we are available. This is like, um, this is a full-time job for you. A full-time passion. Uh, it, it is, yeah. but um, it's very rewarding, extremely rewarding. Yeah. And are you looking for volunteers? Always looking for volunteers. Okay. Always. <laughs> what kind of jobs uh, do you have for them? I mean. Well, we have a multitude of jobs. We have pick up people where we, they go on a regular scheduled basis, Mondays or Thursdays or whatever, one day and they pick up at the supermarkets and they bring the food back to the building where we have people that mark it and we have to date it and make sure it's rotated on our shelves and they stack it so it looks like a supermarket. We have a front area reception area where you do intake and you greet the people. Mm -hmm. um, and that, after a while, that gets very emotional Mm. Um, and you get you get attached yeah. to some of the people because it, everybody's a paycheck away from being hungry if you That's think right. about it. Yeah. Some of the people that I've come across have lost their jobs, um, lost a spouse, mm -hmm. uh, had a fire, or had a, a terrible car accident and couldn't work. Um, and there are truly stories that really move me is when you have somebody come back and volunteer that mm. you helped yes. and they come back. That's and awesome. it is good. Yeah. It's a very good feeling. So um, we have those volunteer opportunities, or if you really want to get down and busy, then you get on Miss Best List, and uh, <laughs> you might end up uh, having to buy some boots and stuff like that, but you're out in the field. You're, you're knocking mm. on the doors and, and helping mm. these people. You might learn how to put up sheetrock. You might learn how to muck a house. I mean, I, I don't know how to do some of that stuff, but I'm surely willing to learn, yeah. and um, it matters. Yeah. Well, Beth, I, I have something special for you, but I have to go get it. Hold up. <laughs> I meant to have it on my lap, but I... We, um, we appreciate so much of everything you do that we have, and you're going to be the recipient of our first Look, I'm gonna cry. Hometown Heroine Award because you are fueling the flame of others and um, encouraging other people to volunteer and do what you do, and you do such a beautiful job for the community, and we just want to thank you. Really, I mean, you've done so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You make me cry now on camera. <laughs> that was not fair. That was beautiful. And, um, and, and that's really what it's about, and, and we just wanted to make sure that people know how hard people are working here for those of us, because like you said, we're all just one paycheck away maybe from uh, having some difficulty in paying our bills or paying our rent or even buying food for the family. So thank you for all of your tireless work. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Beth Coleman from South Strand Helping Hand. We'll be right back. I am going to cry. <laughs> 
South Strand is a nonprofit organization that provides food and relief assistance for those in need. South Strand Helping Hand depends solely on volunteers and donations from the public. If you wish to donate or find yourself needing assistance, please stop by Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. South Strand Helping Hand is located at 812 South Poplar Drive in Surfside Beach. Find them on Facebook or call 843-238-4594. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill. Wine Spectators Award of Excellence. Voted Best of the Beach 15 years. Classic Tableside Service. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill on Restaurant Row in Myrtle Beach. Visit thoroughbredsrestaurant.com. show our voice ignited I hope you enjoyed hearing um, all the inspirational information and ignite igniting the spirit uh, that we uh, joined in on today and it's just so great hearing the stories and hearing those voices in our community that are just contributing so much so we heard from Karen Reardon Angie Knight and of course Beth Coleman our hometown heroine tonight um, I just wanted to point out a couple of people here tonight that are joining us that really helped us get this show off the ground. And first of all, Karen Budden is uh, here tonight. Karen, wave. <laughs> and Karen, uh, she was the one who uh, kind of fueled my flame and ignited my spirit in uh, really getting this show off the ground. It's something I've been thinking about for so many years. And I just am so grateful to her and, of course, her husband, Bud, who's uh, the guru behind all of the electronics and video and logo making and all of that. So thank you to the both of you. And, of course, Mary Beth Mabry, who came on board right away. I met her uh, pro probably about within the year. And she has just been so supportive of me. And she just wants this whole thing to succeed. And she's, uh, like, putting all the stepping stones in front of us. So I just wanted to thank uh, Team Liz Calloway Show, Team TLCS. We're going to get that straight sometime. And I wanted to thank all of you, and it's time for door prizes now. So um, thank you so much for coming, and I hope you had a great time at Thoroughbreds uh, Chop House to, and Seafood Grill. We're going to uh, be here every other Tuesday, and we look forward to seeing you right here next Tuesday, February 19th. Good night, everybody. Thank you.